So we're part of Veritas Education. Uh, we were founded in 2010. Uh, we are a member of the National Association for College Admissions Counseling. And generally, our mission is to help students to develop the reflective and young adult mindset following principles of growth mindset and other research-based principles to help them to reach their, their fullest potential. And we do this through our enrichment classes and by participating in many competitions to give students as many opportunities as possible. We also have our college advising services where we help students apply for colleges and go all along the pathway to develop all the extracurriculars and the skills they need to get there. We have our one-on-one -on -one tutoring as well. And we also have a organization called Branch Out where students have opportunities to gain leadership skills and do volunteering and help the community. Uh, with me here is Dr. Wu. And Dr. Wu is our co-founder. She's also founded Branch Out and serves in many capacities. She is the board of director and chair of the Harvard Asian American Alumni Alliance. Also the DC chair of Harvard Graduate School of Education. She's been a teacher and a professor in many different universities. She's been a speaker in all sorts of places and she works very hard to represent the Asian American community and to raise awareness of different opportunities for people to be able to grow. It's also one of the Committee 100's next generation leaders. My name is Liz Huffaker and I'm an education specialist with Veritas. Um, I am an expert in English language teaching, and I focus on deep thinking and writing with our students. I mostly do the classes for our college essay workshops and for our TJ prep classes, which we'll talk a lot about today. And I work with a lot of students who go to TJ now, also McLean students, Oakton, Rachel Carson, and other schools all throughout Fairfax County. I've worked a lot in an international education with students of all kinds of backgrounds, and I have published quite a few things on my own. Now, primarily, we're going to be talking today about TJ and how to get into TJ, how the admissions process works. And but one of the things we do to help students with this process is we have our TJ prep courses. And we wanted to give you a testimonials from some of our students and parents before we get started so you can get an idea of the kinds of successes we've had. So this is from a student. His name is David. And he I had the opportunity to be in a couple different TJ prep programs trying to get ready for this test. And through our program, he found that he was not only able to learn how to answer the TJ questions, but also to think more about who he is as a person. He said, learn to think holistically about who I am and how to present myself, which is a huge key into really being successful on this test. We also have from parents. So Ms. Wong here says, I can't stop thinking about how much I value your edits and comments to my son. He needs to hear them badly and he can follow the ideas when you point out to him. I haven't seen any other teacher give him such helpful and honest feedback. So I really appreciate it. So we work very hard to make sure that our students receive the kinds of feedback and important information that they need to be able to succeed. So this is our agenda for today. This is basically how we're going to go. We're going to start with talking about how students qualify for TJ to make sure that everyone's on the same page of who is able to go and who is not. And then we're going to talk about the selection process, how it might be different. It can be a little confusing. So we want to make sure that we make that very clear for everyone. We're going to talk about the process of getting selected and the keys to being able to really do well in this process. So to start with, very basically, to qualify to go to TJ, you do need to live in the areas that they serve. So the residency requirements, you must either live in Arlington County, Fairfax County, Falls Church City, Loudoun County, or Prince William County. It is not enough to just own property there. You do need to actually live there, and they will need you to provide proof of that. Barring that, you also have academic requirements. So before they get there, the student should have completed a full year course of Algebra 1. They can be in their eighth grade year enrolled in a full year honors level Algebra 1, but they do need to have completed Algebra 1 before they actually get to TJ. It is important that they be enrolled in an honors science course, also either an honors social studies or English language arts course, and they must maintain a 3.5 unweighted GPA by the end of seventh grade. Now, their GPA is going to be calculated in the end using their seventh grade finals and the first quarter of eighth grade, 
but that first quarter of eighth grade will not boost someone's GPA up to a 3.5. They really should have that in seventh grade. So let's talk about the student portrait sheet. This is the main part that people are concerned about. So there are five essay questions on this test. There is one of them that is a math and science problem solving question. And this is a question where the students will need to explain how to solve a problem and follow along and explain that to their reader. The other four questions are student-centered questions. And these are questions that will ask the student to be reflective about who they are and demonstrate what kinds of experiences they have had to show that they qualify for TJ. Now, the SPS or the student portrait sheet, these are the sorts of things that TJ will be looking for as they grade these essays. So these are the various skills that are needed. They call these the portrait of a graduate skills. These are the primary skills that Fairfax County dis has established as necessary skills that students need to know today to be successful in the 21st century. So the skills they're looking for to see if the student is going to be successful at TJ is whether they are a communicator, a collaborator, an ethical and global citizen, a creative and critical thinker, a goal-directed and resilient individual. So all of these are necessary communication. They want people who are able to explain things. We have, you have a lot of scientists, they need them to be able to communicate with other scientists to develop more things. Collaboration, they're really focused on people who need teamwork. This is a huge skill that universities in particular are looking for as well. They're looking for students who are aware of their environment and aware of issues around them and they're able to make a difference there. They want creative students who are seeking out new ways to solve problems, and they want people who are able to continue and persevere and follow through on goals that they've set. Additionally, they're looking for these three ideas that a student is an innovator, a leader, and a problem solver. Now, one of the reasons our students are usually so successful when they go through our system is because the background behind these kinds of skills is the core of what we do with all of our students. So even our students who are not in TJ or not applying to TJ, these are the kinds of skills we're working on with them. So this is what we call our Veritas pyramid of what skills we need our students to develop as they're applying for college and developing what they need to be successful beyond college. So most students are pretty good, particularly anyone wanting to go to TJ largely has a very good GPA. These are usually a checkbox that they've got. But where it gets difficult is this top section here, this independent thinking, leadership experience, self-discovery writing. These are the tools that they need to be able to be successful on the TJ exam and also at TJ in general. And because we have so much experience helping students with this in all sorts of areas, that has made us very successful with this particular kind of test for TJ successful stories over the past four years or so. This is not a complete list, but this is a lot of the universities that we have been able to help students apply for and get into. So you can take a look here. We have many students getting into places like Carnegie Mellon, the University of Michigan, MIT, all of the huge STEM schools that TJ students want to go to. We've been able to help students get in there because we help them develop these self-discovery and critical thinking skills. And this is actually not the latest. This is from... Oh. Uh, before this past year. Okay, so we have even more now. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to update this. All right, so once your student has taken the test, this is the part that gets a little bit complicated, so I'm going to kind of go over it. TJ created this new system uh, last year to create a different selection system. It is a little bit more complicated than it used to be. So it used to be just a standardized test. They take the top scorers of this test throughout the whole area. Now they have what they call the seat allocation system. And this is how this works. Every public school in the cooperating school divisions receives a number of seats equal to 1.5% of their eighth grade population. And that's how many seats are guaranteed or at least allocated to that school. So the top scoring students of that school, including that number, are those that go. 
Now, this largely means that students are competing more with students in their own school than they are with the entire area. But if a school does not have enough eligible candidates to fill their number of allocated seats, those become what we call unallocated seats. So say Cooper Middle School has an eighth grade class of 483 students. Now, 1.5% of that is seven students. So Cooper Middle School has been given seven seats in TJ. So the top seven qualifying scores from Cooper Middle School will be granted admission. But if they do not have qualifying scores, those seats will become unallocated. So say they only have five students applying, they have two extra seats, those will become unallocated. Or if they have seven students, but some of them are not qualified, even though they've taken the test, they also will not be granted. So in the end, after all of this, your student will receive one of three results. They will either get their offer, which means they get to go to TJ and that's awesome. In that case, they have a deadline and they have to accept the offer by that deadline. There is no way to defer. And if they decline the offer, they cannot change their mind later. There's also a wait pool. If other students have chosen not to accept the offer, people from the wait pool will be given a chance to take their place. Or you could get no offer, meaning you have not been accepted. And there is an opportunity to apply for 10th grade later. That'll give the students some more time to develop some skills that they may be missing. So a lot of people wonder, what do we do if we are waitlisted? Um, you will be given an option to stay in the wait pool or leave. And then the highest evaluated students in the wait pool will receive offers as they are made available. Wait pool offers will continue to be made until all seats have been filled or the school year begins, whichever one of those occurs first. The number of seats to be filled generally is 550. So that's the top number that they're seeking. If they hit 550 accepted, then that's the end. So the important part or the cool part, how to excel in the application process. So there are largely three things that a student needs to show to be successful in the SPS. First one, they really do need to have STEM interest. So it is important. TJ's mission statement is all about creating scientists. They're working on STEM and they're working on science and math. So some students may apply and they're really intelligent. They're really great. They have great great grades, but they're really not actually interested in science. And this can detract from them because if they don't have enough experience in scientific things, they can't demonstrate that interest, then they just may not be a good fit for TJ. And so then TJ rejects them, not because they're not good students, but because they're not STEM students. So that's one thing that they do need to highlight. The second one is writing ability. And this is very important because they do need to be able to communicate that. And this, this test is basically their only moment to really showcase themselves. And if they're not good at writing, then they're going to struggle. And then the third key real thing is the deep thinking is in their writing. They need to demonstrate that they are deeply considering themselves. They're reflective and they're able to apply these principles in other ways. Some ways to highlight your STEM experiences, you want to be able to use them in your essays. Um, most students, when they come in, these are the kinds of things they've done. They've, they've participated in STEM competitions. A lot of the students are doing, say, Lego competitions, robotics, uh, BBO, things like that, AMC, math competitions, all kinds of things. So they've participated in lots of things and they can talk about their experiences. Now, writing ability TJ really does want scientists who can communicate. And we've all had an issue with maybe a doctor or a scientist who is publishing things and we don't know what it says. And that makes it very difficult. So TJ wants to encourage people who are able to do these things. And they need to have these writing abilities on their own. The test itself will not allow them to use a spell checker or any kind of grammar help. So they really need to have those skills already. So this here is an example of a student that would come to us and this is say we would give them a timed writing here and we're practicing. So this is their first draft. So the question they've been asked is what is your favorite subject in school? They need to write in 15 minutes a response to this. Now this one is a little short, um, but this is what they had. So this student has begun with my favorite subjects in school are math and science, clearly demonstrating an interest in STEM. Um, but that's why I chose TJ. I'd like to learn harder math problems and challenge myself to get the solutions in different ways. 
science is my favorite overall. I'd like to see and learn more about the beauty of chemistry and life. So we have truthfully not a very good answer. This is showing that she has answered the question technically. She did say her favorite subject. There are a few grammar mistakes. They're not too bad. Um, but this is very surface level. There's nothing in here that tells us very much about who she is as a person or whether or not she will fit in TJ. We just know maybe she likes chemistry. So what we would do, or what we did do, is we have two forms of feedback. So we have the written feedback that they can look at. So we go through, we make all kinds of comments and highlighting things and suggestions. Maybe you should take out this. Maybe you should add a sentence about this and questions to think about on the side. So there'll be comments and all kinds of things. Then we will also include verbal feedback. Here, this is the conversation that I would have with the student and I've just written it here for your own sake. But I would keep asking them things like, why math? Why science? Why are you enjoying challenging yourself? Why is it your favorite? Because if the student can't answer why they like it, it's going to be very difficult for them to do this. So when we work with them, we talk with them a lot and keep asking them to push themselves deeper and deeper in their thoughts. Why do you like science? What is it about math that you like? Why do you want to do this? There's got to be a reason here. You can't just like it. Otherwise, there's nothing to talk about. Um, I suggest that they stay on one topic here. She's got both math and science. And if she has enough information about both, that's fine. But if she can get one story, that might be more useful. She did have this comment about the beauty of chemistry, which was the closest thing she got to having something unique. And so I wanted to know more about that. I would ask her about that and get her to elaborate and tell me what she's thinking so I can help draw that out from her. And I'd ask, do you have a story to tell you? Because that's a key. If you can tell a story that lives with your reader way more than just telling them anything. People remember stories more than they remember anything else. And so if they can have a story, it'll make it so much better. And then this idea, maybe what sparked them originally. So I would have this conversation with the student, asking them all of these questions to get them to think deeper about their answer. And then we have a second draft here. So you'll see this one is a little bit longer. Um, she's reduced down to science, says, I've always been fascinated by how life interacts together. When I was very young, I kept silkworms, rabbits, goldfish, crabs, cats, and dogs as pets. I carefully studied how to raise them by reading through textbooks on each animal. As I studied life science in school, my knowledge of how plants and animals interact has grown. I used chemistry knowledge to know what the best waters and soil content were for my new plants. Studying science allows me to understand my passion for plants and animals at a much deeper level. It fascinates me that all these different kinds of life affect each other and interact. I'm always seeking new ways to improve my knowledge. Now we could go deeper here, but this is a considerably better draft. It is telling us more about why she likes science. We have a specific part of science and we have a piece of her life that it is connected to. And it's been part of her life for so long. This is the kinds of deeper writing we need them to be able to do in a timed environment. So we do this a lot. We do a lot of timed writings. We go deeper, we edit them, we bring them back, we talk with them over and over again, forcing them to think harder every time. Because the deep thinking is this key. Now that first draft was very surface level and we use this sort of metaphor here to help students kind of think about what kinds of information they need. So surfing is where she was at. So if you're surfing on the ocean, you're just at the very top of the ocean, you're never gonna see what's been if you're snorkeling, you're going a little bit deeper. You're, you can put your head down. You can see a little bit deeper. You can see the fish moving around. You've got another level. If you're scuba diving, you can get down there. You can start seeing connections between things. And as you start drawing connections and conclusions, your, your writing gets deeper. And at the deepest level, you have C4 exploration where you can see the whole ocean. You can see how everything fits together. And you've got a bigger picture that you're able to connect with. So we're trying to get students to go from surfing all the way down here to seafloor exploration. And our summer TJ prep course. So this is when we're hosting TJ prep courses this summer. We have two different sessions. Term one will go from June 20th through July 15th, and it'll be Monday through Fridays from 4 to 6 p.m. Term two is same schedule, just in, from July 18th to August 12th. And students can sign up. This will be online. We will have 
writing portions and we'll have math portions to help students prep for the problem solving explanations as well. So they'll get all of the all of the information that they need, all of the skills they need on all levels. We would love to have all of your students there. You can sign up at our website. And then everybody who attended this workshop will get to use this coupon code and is unique to those of us here. And it'll be valid between today and next week. So you have a week to use this code, TJ Workshop 2022. And I will put that in the chat to make sure that we've all got it. Thank you.